your application जैसे applications essay okay so there are uh, there are various types of essays which you have to uh, you know write so depends on which location you are also going to for example uh, in some of the european so there are some common application tools also so through those common application tools you can apply to various universities from one uh, you know one one at from one place so then you have you know five essays three essays uh, so topic is given to you and you have to write your opinion on those topic write your essays on those topic there is a word limit and there is a specific question specific questions such as you know your biggest achievement the uh, your failure biggest failure you know and uh, the time when you uh, when you you know led a team and you succeeded the time when you made a mistake and you learned something uh, valuable like that okay so if it's a topic based essay then it's very important that you address that question uh, really well the question should be properly addressed okay it should uh, whatever they are asking should come very clearly and should be impactful okay and other than that you follow the word limit and you follow so when they give you a specific question uh, the word limit will not be 500000 words it will be slightly you know less but when you have to write a generic essay a statement of purpose in general then then in that statement of purpose it could be you know 500 words or 1000 words also then you can write as much as you want so in that you have to write everything uh, so you divide that into several parts roughly and uh, you try to understand that uh, that what is university trying to see uh, you know when when they see your application so what sort of person prati is we don't go really emotional in that we don't go talk about our friends or talk about you know our personal life but in general what are your personality traits are you compassionate are you you know uh, are you competition driven what what is your personality so they want to understand that and then your achievements uh, during your school in your school outside your school for example a lot of students uh, uh, engage in uh, community services okay they help um, ngos they help, they teach you know at several ngos so they would like to see what you have done for your community do you engage in community services or not if you don't then what what other thing are you doing other things are you doing which are taking up your time and are, is making you you know a special person so you divide that into several parts like this krithi and then bring a synchrony it should come very naturally that how are you starting and how are you ending so you talk about yourself you talk about your academic scores your academic you know career till now till 12th class your personal uh, you, you know your uh, personality comes in the initial part only then your achievements at school outside school you know what otherwise how are you interested in you know making a making the world a better place why are you interested in this university how the scores will help you achieve your goals so these are some general things you have to mention you may need help of uh, you know an experienced editor who can guide you that what sort of things you should write because there is a limitation of words now so sometimes we 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 get swayed okay we we start writing random things so the editor helps you understand which thing should not be included because they may not be impactful or that may not make a huge difference and which things are mandatory okay which thing must be written something which you might have missed definitely lisa you can your 11th see 11th is uh, understand that why is 11th scores important so when you apply to your universities na then you may not have your 12th uh, uh, 12th classes score okay so your school schools will be making a predicted you know score sheet for university so universities want to know from the authentic source which is your school that what sort of student lisa is and what do you predict for her So the school will try to see how have what side type of student you have been, what score did you get in tenth, what score did you get in eleventh. School will know the whole, you know, the teachers and the principal would know that what type of student are you, you know, a a, a student who will if you are getting continuously seventy plus percent, then will you be able to maintain that in your twelfth class? So your school will make a predictive score, and then that will be attached in your application. So once your twelfth scores are out. then your 11 scores do not matter lisa 
so right now they will matter because they will be matched with your predicted scorecard okay so the one which you will get uh, made by your school okay your principal will attest that and your teacher will be teachers will be writing what score you, they are expecting in each subject okay i hope i have answered your question visa so you can you know and <clears throat> yeah so that's that's what you know everybody gets a, a low score in 11th class because you change stream and generally school is slightly stringent in giving good percentage okay so uh, therefore uh, you know uh, they don't mind even if you have a slightly lower percentage so i all the students i have taught in my life everybody had the similar you know uh, i would say the uh, similar line graph of percentage a high percentage in 10th then slightly low in or very low in 11th then again a high percentage in 12th because there's a change in any way schools uh, what i've heard is that schools don't give you know uh, a higher percentage in 11th because that because uh, they want you to study hard you know learn more uh, since your 12th is going to be harder than your 10th class so don't worry about that at all krithi will schools give this detail with lor which detail uh, krithi the percentage detail the predicted score card no 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 the lor is different lor is uh, the university may so the lor is recommendation so you are right now very young so once you have you will be in graduation so lor applies everywhere in general life also we give letter of recommendation so if i apply to a job i have to attach recommendations that these people see these people who are at a higher position they have seen me work and they are recommending me uh, in your company in your you know university in your institute so just like that you may need letter of recommendation for certain university so you may not need because you are going for bachelor school for master school it is a mandatory thing no application can be done without letter of recommendation okay so for bachelors at some places or at all of the places you would need letter of recommendation so letter of recommendation is very focused thing your math teachers your physics teachers your literature your english class teacher will be writing one small letter for you two paragraphs or there is a word limit for letter of recommendations too two paragraphs or one paragraph in which they will mention what sort of student they are and why are they recommending you to a certain university Okay, that's what recommendation is. Um, when you will start applying, now so your school school will give you generally. I mean, once your first sem uh, first uh, classes exams have happened, they will give you. So you have to ask them. Once you start your applications in September, Prati, then uh, your counselor or whomsoever is doing your application, and if you are doing it yourself, you will realize that uh, they will ask you that you have to get the predicted score, predicted score card. Okay. then you go and uh, apply that in your uh, school they won't give you themselves you have to ask for it they give it to only those students who are applying for foreign universities because there that's only there you know required only there not at any other place okay all right so it's almost time okay and let's start with uh, the today's topic so before i start i'll give you a quick introduction uh, to all of you My name is Paminder Kaur, and I have been teaching SAT, GRE, and GMAT, the verbal part of all these tests, for last ten years. Okay, and um, I have, uh, as you can see, I have a long experience, and I really like SAT as a test. You know, so I love experimenting with it. I love experimenting with various strategies, different strategies, whether those work for my students or not, and. Uh, uh by like teach i make sure that i understand that which are the problem areas you know uh, where i can work so that my students can have a good score improvement uh so th these are my passions i love you know exploring these uh, problem areas and working on those and today i am going to do one of the grammar topics with you which is closely related with your sat uh, writing and language part all right so there is a cartoon uh, for you okay so they it talks about you know the this cartoon if you read if i give you a uh, 10 seconds to read since nobody has time for semicolons or you know it kind of kind of show you that that punctuation c 
seems archaic to us does it seem old to you also that who uses you know semicolon or colon or dashes these days do you also feel that that these are the old punctuation marks who uses them that he says yes he feels that what about others pushpa kishan giza shreya what do you feel do you feel that punctuations i mean specifically semicolons i mean we can make a huge mistake even if we are using a comma you know um, inappropriately we can make a huge mistake i'll show you some questions uh, but do you when you see semicolon do you ever put a semicolon yourself when you write something do you use a semicolon or a colon ever when you write mails when you write messages when you write uh, you know essays or your answers ishan says no what about others tell me do you tanish says no tanishka says no shreya do you i do just <laughs> okay <laughs> nice i understand just to sound smart uh, shreya does this so yeah, probably i also used to do this with vocabulary when i was you know young uh but you know if you don't know the usage of these words and uh, these sorry uh, these punctuation marks and you're using it just randomly like that you're going to learn it when you do sat because you have to learn it for your exam and you're going to master it because there are going to be lot of questions okay so something which seems so old to us so archaic to us we have to learn that okay and there are two reasons for that first and the foremost reason is that there are multiple questions based on punctuation marks semicolons colons dashes apostrophes in your sat i mean to an extent that in certain papers the total number of punctuation based questions were around 8 to 9 so out of 44 questions 8 to 9 questions are based on punctuations so can you imagine the you know uh, the how how prevalent this is in your test okay so mag the magnitude of this topic in your sat test okay and the second reason is that if you learn it just for exam you won't enjoy it okay uh, so remember that in informal english when you will grow up you will work in big companies you will be you know settled you will be uh, ceos or you will be directors you would be writing to your team na you'll be sending messages you'll be writing emails will you be, will you be writing a shabby message which delivers whatsoever i i don't think you would do that would you do that would you just send you know a shabby shabby message with short forms great like this one of my students are you know asked me a uh, few days before that why aren't they, they taking such short forms it's so convenient ma'am that uh, you know that we write A word with just two letters, and it's so easy. Everybody understands. Why aren't they making us, you know, work more? I had, I literally had no answer for that, and um, so I said, "See, till the time the formal English hasn't changed, and I, I am, I love, I wish that you guys bring that change that, you know, formal English become more casual, okay? But formal English still, sir, uh, you know, lives and survives." survives and i feel that once you guys also grow i see you you know in the big companies you would also be following the rules of formal english so the second reason we must learn about these new punctuation marks is or all the punctuation marks is because they are used quite often in your formal english okay so um, it will improve your written english and um, you know you can then flaunt it also as uh, shreya said okay you will you you will look smarter than others okay so these are the two reasons first is our test has it and second is we improve our language uh, you know by by learning these rules okay we don't make uh, grammatically incorrect sentences all right so the agenda for today is we'll start with a quiz i'll give you some questions which you have to solve for me where we'll look at those sentences separately also i will create an imagery i'll give you an image okay to so imagine how that sentence you know will uh, will what sort of meaning it will convey in the listener's mind when the listener will be, will be imagining then we i will make you do some real sat questions and we'll end with a super surprise part that will help you understand more about either sat or your applications okay something in detail all right so shall we start with the quiz shall i show you the quiz 
I'll show you the quiz only if you write yes in the chat. Thank you, Rati. Oh, hi, Yuvraj. I didn't see you. Okay, let's start. Huh? You have to figure out the problem in these sentences. And as we know that we are doing punctuations, so probably the problem is related to punctuation. So tell me what is the problem with the punctuation here in the chat? What should I correct to make these sentences right? What should be added? What should be deleted? A comma after cooking. What else? Form after cooking, Prati. Okay, that's it. Nothing else. For those who had, uh, for Yuvraj, for Prati, who have taken one of my guests class before, also, don't you think there should be a comma before and too? There should always be a comma before and. No, Prati, we need not uh, delete her here, okay? So we can say Rachel Ray, Rachel Ray finds inspiration in cooking, uh, inspiration in her family and in her dog, okay? Whenever you are giving a list which exceeds more than two, there should always be a comma. Very good, please. A, there should always be a comma before and, and that the name of that comma is Oxford comma. It's heavily tested concept in your SAT, okay? So I told you in the, uh, so there are two, three students from my last class. So I told you in the last class and I told you that you may forget that when you do, you know, a question. So you have to remember that so that you apply it repeatedly and then it becomes part of your, uh, you know, writing style. You know that this comma is right. All right. The next ones. Yes, good. The next one. Thank you. Your donation just helped somebody get a job. Is that right? Is it is it conveying conveying what it should convey? The full stop should be removed. Very good. And G should be converted to a small G. Right? Your donation just helps someone get a job. That's what the sentence is trying to say. Okay, so it says thank you. Your donation just helps someone uh, get a job. Otherwise, it looked like uh, the person said, you know, the full stop should be removed. Right? You're right, you got. Very good. The third one. No comma. Where no comma, Shreya? It's raining cats and dogs. After raining, there should be no comma. Very good, right? Excellent. I'll show you the pictorial representations of these sentences in a while. Let's do the last one. Krati says Oxford comma. Excellent. X, toast and orange juice. So there should be a comma before that. Okay. So let me show you the pictorial representation of these sentences. So the first one you wouldn't believe was actually part of the, you know, the front page of a magazine. And it says that Rachel Ray finds inspiration in cooking her family and her dog. I think the idea here was that putting it in, you know, number, like different, uh, uh, you know, uh, with an enter, like, uh, like heading. So probably the editor must have thought, yeah, it's fine. It's not, you know, conveying the wrong meaning. But actually, the meaning it gives is that she finds inspiration in cooking her family and her dog. And look at the expression of the dog. It looks like the dog is scared to be cooked, you know, uh, tonight. Yeah, it seems as if she finds inspiration is actually cooking her family and her dog. She likes cooking them. Now, that's not what the sentence is trying to say. So, therefore, we have to put a proper comma here to convey the desired meaning. 
So can you say that, see the depth of your punctuation marks? If you don't use even a small comma, something that seems so insignificant to students at times that they say, what if there is no comma, ma'am? It's okay, right? It works without that also. No, it doesn't. A comma can change the meaning of your sentence upside down. So here we have to say she finds inspiration in cooking. She finds inspiration in her family, comma, and in her dog. These are the three things in which she finds inspiration. Okay, so therefore, punctuation marks are uh, punctuation marks are not insignificant or trivial things. These are very important, and probably that's why SAT is testing so much on punctuation because probably it knows that students these days are paying least attention to it, and it's important when you study in your you know college. You'll be otherwise you know saying whatsoever comes to your mind and without punctuation marks, and it will create a ruckus. Uh, there okay so they want you to prepare for that okay so she finds inspiration and so i put the right punctuation mark so and i got uh i mean you guys had given wonderful answers for this huh the next one as you had uh, told me that the full stop should be removed so the first full stop this full stop changes everything it looks like you know the person is thanking somebody for because the donation helped and now the person says go get a job and these are two very different sentences. You were just saying that your donation helped someone. And why are you telling this person to get a job? Okay. These are two different sentences conveying different meaning. So it should be properly punctuated. We did not need any full stop. So a full stop cannot randomly come anywhere. Okay. A full stop is very crucial. A full stop means whatever you were speaking, whatever you were telling, that's over and you're starting a new idea. Okay, that's different from the previous idea. So if something is part of a trail of your sentence, that trail cannot be separated just with a full stop or semicolon. Okay, you need to put a comma or probably you need to put no punctuation mark there. All right. So it's raining cats and dogs. If I give you the pictorial representation of that, it literally means with a comma here that it's Probably, literally, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, when we say it's raining cat, cats and dogs, that's a figurative thing, okay? It's not literally cats and dogs raining from the sky. So, if you say it's raining, comma, cats and dogs, you know what meaning it creates? It, it's, it's like I tell, you know, Ishan, that it's raining, comma, Ishan. So, I'm telling Ishan that Ishan, it's raining. Okay, Krati, it's raining. I'm addressing you and I'm telling you that it is raining probably outside. And the sentence is not trying to say that. It's not telling the cats and dogs the way it is, you know, that uh, that cats and dogs, see, it's raining. The cats and dogs is a figurative language that means heavily. So this sentence means it's raining heavily. And just imagine, will you put a comma before heavily? If I said it's raining heavily, will you put a comma before heavily? What about others, right? No, we will not. So similarly, cats and dogs also mean heavily. It's just a phrase used for the, you know, the expression that heavily, okay? A torrential rainstorm. This is the meaning. And the last one, okay? For the last one, this is the pictorial representation, okay? With a comma, everything has its own, uh, you know, standing. So I had eggs, toast, and orange juice. These three are separate things. But if you say, I had eggs, toast and orange juice, then you had eggs, eggs are separate. And then toast and orange juice, juice as if the, the toast had orange juice on it. And I don't think anybody wants to say that. So you must be seeing in your day-to-day -day life that people don't use, you know, a comma before and when they're giving a list. And that's wrong. There should be a comma before and to separate the three items, the four items, the four, five items you're talking about. So they should come separately. Okay. So eggs, toast, and orange juice are three different items. So there should be a proper comma after each item. And that means there should be a comma before and. Okay. So don't forget this comma ever. And remember that this comma before and is only when the list is exceeding two. If it is I had eggs and toast, then it will be eggs and toast. Okay. For two things for the two items there is no comma before and 
okay there is comma before and only when the items exceed more than um, you know two all right so this is what we learned about uh, just the importance of punctuation okay now i am going to show you a variety all right of the real sat questions so um, just a recap of quick you know a quick recap of the basics so a missing or unnecessary comma can create blunders ha huh? remember that don't take comma to be an insignificant punctuation mark and assume that you know even if i don't put it it's fine another thing a missing or unnecessary full stop can fuse the meaning of the you know sentences fuse means it's like you know um a road without a red light where two cars come running and collide into each other so if there is a there's proper uh, you know traffic lights on the roads then one will stop give other the time to pass okay and if there are no proper uh, traffic lights then there will be collisions or a lot of traffic jam okay so similarly if you don't put proper you know uh, periods full stops there can be a jamming of ideas and we don't want that so therefore full stops are also necessary don't just you know uh, unnecessarily put it anywhere randomly in the sentence look at try to read the meaning they want you to read the meaning so let's try some punctuation marks so these these are all the punctuation marks okay period period is equal to full stop okay in american english or in english you will see people calling full stop a period question marks okay the question marks uh sat doesn't test you a lot on question marks there will be few questions on this uh one hardly one question in the full paper but question mark there is not much testing exclamation marks i would say rarer than the question marks uh, in in terms of testing okay so you can uh, ignore that it's like a period commas a quite common uh, you know uh, testing is quite common on this concept semicolon colon semicolon colon dash dash is not mentioned here okay dash or dashes these are the most frequent uh, frequently tested punctuation marks in your essay apostrophes apostrophes are when you put a uh, a uh, you know comma like this at the top for example i say yuvraj's class okay yuvraj's class so i am showing possession ha huh? quotations quotation is when you have inverted commas and uh, apostrophe is one inverted comma ha huh? and parentheses parentheses is brackets okay so these are all punctuation marks you have in your language sat is going to test you mostly on full stops semicolons colon uh, colons and dashes and uh, apostrophe okay these are the common ones so let's start with the actual questions of sat so to check punctuation mark okay one thing is that when they give you for example they give you a text now a part is underlined so when you read you should always read from the starting of the sentence till the full stop and then to the next full stop so the next full stop is here so we it is mandatory that we read this full part you can't just randomly read you know from volunteer till the volunteer and uh, say that the answer is a b or anything okay now if you look at options they are giving you a semicolon they are giving you a full stop they are giving you a semicolon again okay and here we have a co comma okay now one thing okay so they are when they give a semicolon full stop semicolon there is a comma after they there is a comma after then so let's see what the sentence says ha huh? so she found that students who were required to volunteer rush to complete their service hours hours in early in high school is that a complete sentence tell me so whenever you put a full uh, punctuation mark you need to understand the the idea what sort of idea the sentence is trying to convey so the first sentence from she to school is that a complete idea is that a complete sentence will you call it a complete sentence she found that students who volunt who were required to volunteer rushed to complete their service hours in early high school that's a complete idea or not tell me i will take your answers only then you guys have said d i'll tell you whether that's right or not only when you tell me whether the ideas are complete or not yes that's a complete idea 
they then did significantly less regular volunteer work in the 12th grade than did students who were not required to volunteer is that also a complete idea they then then did significantly less regular work wonderful so when you have two complete sentences coming together the punctuation marks which you will accept are either semicolon or a full stop a comma means run on okay this is a new thing i'm teaching you today so if a comma will be joining two complete sentences the name of that error is run on sentences okay so a run on sentence is when you use a comma to join two complete sentences two proper sentences together will you remember this run on when new questions come next now you have to tell me that ma'am ma'am yes this is run on okay now so we have semicolon we have full stop now remember in set a semicolon is replacement of full stop so a semicolon is correct uh, at the place where a full stop was required okay so we have semicolon we have full stop we have semicolon now why are you guys eliminating b and c tell me i i tell you you are right can you give me the reason why you are eliminating b and then c the commas are wrong in b and c so the commas cause an obstruction in the flow of the sentence isn't it so this comma either there should be a comma on both sides of then or there should be no commas isn't it i mean commas on both sides of then will basically mean that then is an extra word and even if you don't read it it will make no difference okay so it would basically would mean they did significantly less work which is fine okay so it is not necessary to use this one comma if we are using a comma kriti then we have to use two commas around them okay so that then becomes yeah excellent yuvraj that is then it's redundant okay so therefore answer is d very well okay very well uh, uh, you know answered question but you need to understand concepts also so see set has limited ways of making wrong options so if you learn what sort of errors is repeatedly gives you then you are uh, you know you are enabling yourself you are widening your resource base and you will be able to eliminate very quickly and come to the right answer even in a tough question too okay so we learned two rules here we learned a rule that a comma joining two complete sentences is a run on error okay and if we want to qualify something as extra in a sentence whether it's a word or it's a phrase there should be two commas around that phrase or around that word one single comma in the starting or one single comma at the end will not work okay two things we learned here huh so these will be tested uh, next remember this huh so we can start from starting and read till end because this is one sentence huh you don't have a, a choice of deciding that whether how much do you need to read you must start from however and read till by pedulism huh however a recent finding of handedness in marsupials suggests that a trait other than presence of a corpus callosum correlates with handedness and that is by by shreya says a krati says b what are other answers okay i am getting b as an answer okay okay so i'll consider b okay and let me eliminate c and d because you all agree c and d are out ha huh? now we'll also learn what is the school and doing because that will be a learning point here okay do not test it but we'll be learning that what is the use of the school and in the sentence but now for those who are saying b is the answer tell me will you say a trait other than the presence of corpus callosum correlates with handedness what is the clause can i cut this part and say this is the sentence start from here 
a trait correlates with handedness can we say that is the clause ishant tanishka prati this is the definition of that trait other than the presence of corpus callosum right do you see any comma after callosum no na so if there was a comma what did we need we needed another comma here right which means we can't leave it and which also means krati that there should be no comma before others na no comma after traits you either put two commas around a phrase or you put none of them isn't it can i say krati loves driving with a comma here can i say that tell me guys not at all na we never obstruct our subject and verb they come in a flow so you are obstructing your subject and verb now a comma here will work if i give a definition of krati which is irrelevant for example krati who is studying for sat for sat okay now i close so this has to come here okay so that this sentence is krati who who is studying for sat loves driving so there is a has to be a comma before who there has to be a comma after sat so this becomes extra krati loves driving that's the main clause so you can't put randomly one comma so a comma after trait is wrong you're obstructing the sub the flow of the subject and verb and we never do that okay now look at the last part what is colin doing here can you by your understanding of language by the understanding of the sentence tell you what is the role of colin here just try to understand that what is colin you know trying to do here give write me in words that the role of colin in this sentence to list out the trait very good it specifies the definition so uh, yuvraj can we say it gives one word to that definition is it giving so krati can i say is it giving name to that definition name to that trait very good so when you give the name to a trait when you define something you can use a colon okay so a colon or a dash will come to define the previous sentence uh in any way but the previous sentence should be a complete sentence okay if the previous sentence is not complete then you can't use a colon okay so the colon is coming to explain that trait the name of that trait not exactly actually explain to give a name of that trait which is by the way all right so anywhere you see colon coming like this it's correct if this was underlined you can't change it with semicolon you can't change it with comma you can't change it with no punctuation there has to be either a colon or a dash any of these will work all right so some of you may know the answer of this because uh, as i said you know prati yuvraj you guys are from my previous class so i want the answer of this from shreya ishant and tanishka primarily tanishka ishant think about a concept i have taught you today and try to put that concept here what is the name of this concept tanishka we are listing things so when we list things we put a comma before and what is the name of this concept tanishka wonderful ishant do you agree with the answer wonderful b is the answer we are listing we are saying gray kangaroo red neck wallaby red kangaroo and brush tailed python okay so there are four uh, animals huh? 
so there has to be a comma before and okay a comma after and a dash before and and a semicolon before and a semicolon and a dash and i mean that i will not say dash and semicolon and is always wrong in your you know uh, sct never choose an answer which is giving you semicolon and. all right okay one more question so where should i start reading from i mean ideally when you will be doing the paper you will read from probably starting but just to be sure that which punctuation marks is right yes you should start from employee because there is a full stop so that means this idea is different so start from here to understand this idea and then only you will be able to understand whether we need you know a punctuation or not employees whose tuition is reimbursed often stay with their employer even after they complete their degree degrees because their new qualifications give them opportunities for advancement within the company answers from all of you not just two answers huh? okay okay very good so now tell me is the second part because removing full stop prati says there should be removal of full stop uh, so tell me one thing here the because part if i say because i am your teacher can i say this sentence alone and not attach it with any other sentence can a because clause be just said or you know not at all right it's always dependent on something you will listen to me because i am your teacher i will teach you because you are my students so because sentence is dependent on the uh, clause before or after so here employees whose tuition is reimbursed often stay with their employer even after they complete their degrees why because their new qualification give them opportunities for advancement within the company so tanishka isn't this because clause dependent on the previous one just write yes or no is it dependent on the previous one so if something is dependent on the previous or the latter one we never use a period we never use a semicolon to join those those sentences okay so therefore a and b are definitely out and the second part is not explaining the previous part so therefore colon is also out and answer has to be c no punctuation because it's a close dependency okay and close dependency means you have to go in a flow without any punctuation marks the maximum i mean the, the punctuation that might have worked here was a comma okay but that's also stylistic not mandatory comma okay mandatory is that you keep the flow on don't stop it because the sentence is not over yet the meaning is not over yet okay all right something new you will learn here probably give me your answers then i'll teach you what is you know new here answers from all of you i should get all answers ishant your answer <laughs> okay please you got uh, you're trying to find out the clues in what i say all right so let me teach you something new here so when you write messages when you write emails when you write essays do you ever use bracket to write something tell me yes or no do you write bracket do you use bracket to brackets to mention something and if you use then why do you use i mean suppose you're writing something to me you're writing something to your friend 
and there comes something in your mind but you put it but you put it in brackets do you do that why do you do that if you put something in brackets why would you put something in brackets when you write either a message essay or a mail to specify information that is not completely necessary so can i say extra information extra info right so bracket tells the reader that see look this information is extra you can ignore it it read the sentence without this okay and we just did in previous questions that when you want to qualify something as extra you can put two commas around that information isn't it now there are some more options so one of the options is commas two commas around that information second option is that you to put you put a pair of brackets and the third option is you put a pair of dashes okay you put two dashes around that information which is extra okay and hence whatever is coming between those two dashes will qualify as extra information unnecessary information okay now you can choose any one of these what set will do one place it will have a dash another place it will give you a comma now that's wrong okay one place there would be a comma other place they will give you a dash that's also wrong okay a bracket and a comma a dash and a bracket that's also wrong you choose the pair a bracket closes bracket comma closes comma dash closes dash so can you see a dash here and not just blindly go on this because dash has a different use uh, also dash is used like a colon to explain the previous sentence right here they are saying this shrimp survive by using tiny shear like claws so that is the sentence what was the shrimp originally thought to exist only around an undersea volcano near hawaii so there is a dash what do we need here tell me what do we need after hawaii a dash no punctuation semicolon or a comma dash right so answer is so, so this question if you know this concept if you have you know really understood this concept by heart then you know that answer has to be c it would take i think less than 10 seconds you just need to check whether dash is used to explain something previous sentence or is it used like a bracket to cover something extra you just need to understand that that's it and once you know that your answer is uh, your answer is done you raj one second i'll take your question a dash in these situation should be connected to both letters around it so dash in this case is yuvraj connected to the whole information that comes between those dashes and it would be explaining generally the noun before for example in this case they are explaining this shrimp okay so they, if there is a pair of dash if there is a pair of commas or you know brackets it's explaining generally the thing before it okay the noun before it the verb before it all right good so this is another new concept you have learned we learned to run on we learned how to close extra information three ways to close ex extra information and oxford comma also all right the last probably the thing okay then we will do the grammar takeaways i want correct answer from all not even one single wrong answer ha huh? that's my expectation whenever i end you know the sct question the last question everyone should get correct give your best ha huh? read it carefully i'm giving you 30 seconds nice very good prati remove but so a goes out you are asking me to do process of elimination but is redundant because we have a while here and shall we use while twice prati since you are eliminating the answers so we can't use while twice that's redundant so b is also out now for all those who have not given answer yet just check 
whether the idea before semicolon is complete that means from while till dietership is that a complete idea i have got keetana's answer i've got leet's answer prati's answer shreya's answer ishan's answer too tanishka's answer too wonderful excellent right it has to be see i'm very happy okay that you have given me right answer there cannot be a semicolon here the idea before is incomplete while is so whenever you will have a conjunction attached like uh, to your clause na while because all those since that idea automatically becomes dependent on the other idea before or after so there cannot be a period separating those two ideas there cannot be a semicolon separating those two ideas so a semicolon between one dependent and other independent sentence one incomplete and other complete sentence is straight away wrong but that requires that we read carefully okay it's not just random looking and saying oh semicolon is wrong you have to read carefully yes city again and again requires you to read as carefully as possible okay okay so let's understand the uh, you know the summary of today's class so as i just said knowledge of sentence structure helps in using correct punctuation so you need to understand what is the structure of the sentence is it a fragment is it a phrase fragment and phrase is same thing is it a clause clause means is it a you know proper sentence complete idea and if it is a clause is it an incomplete clause or is it a complete clause you need to know that huh? look at these two sentences tell me which one of these is a fragment and which one of these is a complete sentence i'm naming them one and two which one of these is fragment and which one is complete sentence or you can say incomplete also okay krati has answered what about others very good right first is complete and second is you can say fragment or incomplete idea okay um whenever there is a subject and verb that qualifies as a clause but this is an incomplete idea so you can take it as a fragment you know this requires something else to complete okay and the second takeaway is it's a crime to join two complete ideas with a comma never ever do that two complete sentences with a comma it's an error ha huh? the professor lectured complete sentence the student took note okay the students took note those are complete ideas don't just think that since these are small sentences why not use a comma okay that's wrong we don't use comma considering whether it's a small sentence or it's a big sentence we use a comma or we use a semicolon or uh, yeah run on exactly krati this is a run on ha huh? we use a semicolon or we use a period understanding the nature of the sentence whether it is as i said earlier structured whether it's a complete sentence or not the cl class began the professor lectured students took note now this looks like a list to you okay so this has to be again joined with proper stops okay you can't use a comma to join these these sentences that would be wrong all right okay so a lot of teaching you know learning and uh, teaching today so let's learn a bit about you know your so some of you were asking me you know that uh, when will registration open or close so i thought i'll uh, i mean anyways i so, uh, fortunately what the surprise element includes information from that part so whenever your registrations are on you know i want you to remember that there comes an option when you register for sct so it's a long form okay i want you to take care of uh this option of student search service okay so when you register for your sct make sure that you're opting for student search service and why you need to opt for that okay let's understand that so you will be registering on anybody who wants to know when august will be open college board website okay so you can type college board website the first option will be college board website okay so uh 
you can look at the details there and when your registration start and you start filling the form you have to fill a lot of details you know what type of competitions you have participated in those are optional but but one should one should fill it if you are uh, you know clicking for or cho choosing for student search service now why do you need to do that because this way is you're opting to hear directly from colleges and scholarships so you're opting that a college and university can directly me directly contact me so you have to be active on your email learn whatever you know uh, information they will be sending you advertisements they will be sending you have to see whether that matches your requirement or not okay it helps you to share your interest to find your college match now suppose you are very good at certain thing you suppose you are very good at sports you are very good at writing you play at state level you play at you know national level or you're writing for a very big organization and that interest matches with the university's interest you know university is famous for that department or university is making that department robust then university may find the right match through this okay so university will get to know that the student has accomplished a lot in this sector why not i contact the student and you know arrange uh, an interview or send some information that helps the student understand whether our university will suit him or her okay and you opt for it when you are still in process of choosing colleges that are best for you so some students are predecided that we are going to to go for abc college or abc university but generally most of us are still struggling even after our applications we think why not why shouldn't i apply to one more university or why shouldn't i add that university also so if you are in process of that you must do that because then you give an option to universities to reach out to your your you directly okay that means you will be the judge that whether you really are interested in this university whether it has anything you know related to your um, your uh, you know strengths and your achievements all right now the stats show so these are the stats huh? college board website says this the stat so um, so four four year colleges so your bachelor's degree is for four years most colleges in us rely on student search to find the right student for their campus okay so uh, approximately 1500 colleges and universities included are relying on student search service you know to find out the best match for them this is one of the facts okay a well uh, this, uh, researched fact second fact says that 29% of uh, you know when you apply it, so there's a percentage huh so more offers for of college admission that's the heading basically so students who are contacted by college through student search service on average receive more offers of college admission so 29% more so whatever your percentage it will increase the chances of getting admission into other institutes also if you go through the student search service if you apply you know you uh, opt for it and more chances of scholarship so dollar 300 million scholarship is there in the pool so scholarship partners and colleges use the data in search to help and find help find candidates for their scholarship so you're opening yourself you know if you have achievements you're filling those achievements you're opening yourself to be contacted by the colleges and universities Okay, so it's a wonderful thing. Do read more about it uh, for your, you know, reference. And when you register, try to, uh, you know, opt for this. Preet, right now the August registration is not uh, August test is not declared yet. Okay, first they will declare and then they will open the registration. So it should happen most probably by June. So uh, keep checking College Board website once in a fifteen day. Okay, fortnightly keep checking what's happening there. and anyways you look or uh, you seem you know uh, quite um, curious student because you are attending such webinars seminars master classes so you would be you would know you know when when the uh, you know when the, the test is launched so you would know from such webinars and all this but for yourself keep checking college board website july exam is not for us is not is for american students is not for us is not for international students any international students. okay all right so this is about our this was about the you know uh, the part which which may help you you know maximize your uh, potential at the cost of what kit tha na the studying abroad cost sct okay sct cost of what our course or the sct registration
okay registration fees uh in indian rupees it is approximately 15 to 18 thousand uh you can check it's around 200 dollars something like that you know you can check exactly that on the website all right uh okay other than the uh you know the normal uh part of our master class Prati, we do that uh we do you know sessions uh where we inform about how to write essays or when to do applications so you can contact our office. I have shared numbers with you. So Leap Scholar, you can contact us and ask that when do we do sessions on you know such things. This is academic part. Okay. You can uh, attend uh, one of the if they are going to do something on you know writing essays. I am not because that's altogether different department. So you learn more about that from there. So we have a uh, undergrad counseling services if you're interested then you can reach out to us you know we help students in building their profiles in college shortlisting in writing essays um, and uh, we advise on scholarships financial guidance and visa assistance what is extra credit kithana what do you what do you i mean mean by extra credit are you talking about ap's Okay, so you want to learn AP, you want to study for AP, which AP, calculus? Please write your question precisely. What sort of help you need uh, related to it? You missed it. Which class you are in, Kirthana? AP happens only once in a year. So you're in 12th class. Now you cannot take AP. AP can be taken only when, I mean, so AP's registrations are also very, you know, uh, they, it's very fierce. So uh, generally students register for it at least two months in advance, three months in advance, or one month in advance is mandatory, okay, when the registration is closed then. And AP happens when you are, when you enter class 11. It happens only in the month of, you know, May. So now you can't write, uh, Prati, uh, Prithana, you can't write AP. No, there is no substitute. So AP is not mandatory. AP is you write to uh, make your profile better. So universities, if you write, so many of you may not know. Do you guys know what APs are? Other students? Shall I explain what APs are? APs are advanced placement. So APs are for, uh, you know, subjects like calculus, world history, US polity, computer science, and uh, biology, such, such subjects. So when you write AP, it uh, you get a score out of five, and a good score is four or five, okay? And uh, by submitting your AP, you show the university. So AP is a test of that subject, the college level, uh, you know, the first year or the first six months uh, uh, level, you know, uh, topics of that subject. So suppose you write the AP calculus, uh, it would include some topics of your class 12 and a lot of topics from your graduation first year also. So for that, you have to prepare uh, separately and you have to prepare a lot. You may have to prepare six months, seven months to excel in an AP class. It's lengthy, okay? It's not tricky, it's lengthy. It requires concept knowledge of whatever subject you're choosing. So then you prepare, start preparing for AP when you're in 11th class, and then you write it in 12th class because then you need it before your applications. And when you show your AP in your applications, it helps you in two ways. So whichever AP you have taken, that credit will be waived off for the first six months or the first year, depending on whichever AP you've taken. So suppose you take AP, calculus which in a way is math huh? so then uh, the calculus of that level in your college will be waived off you will not have to study that credit in college second is when you write ap and you get a good score the university gets to understand that you are a student who's academically bright so it makes your profile stronger okay that ap kithana uh, there is no substitute okay so you do you work on some other thing now don't worry about ap it's one of the ways huh Give a SAT, get a good score in SAT. Ishant, uh, nothing is mandatory. Except your good academic score, nothing is mandatory. Students get admissions without SAT also. So it is how do you present your profile, which course you are interested in. Does that course require extracurriculars, APs, all these things? Is that a competitive course? Is that a competitive university? So depending on all that, you decide that whether you should apply or take a break and work on your profile. 
okay so it's a serious uh, you know discussion and you should do it with an expert so i you uh, we have experts in our company erin for example is uh, one of the admission uh, counselors here she is in harvard alumni she helps students in uh, you know building their profile and deciding which university she sh they should go to so uh, you need to talk to an expert ishant okay the expert will be able to help you i am a i am i am a teacher i teach sat i am a sat expert so for example you ask me anything about sat i will be able to tell you similarly you need to talk to a an admission expert he or she will be able to tell you what you should do should you wait your profile is too you know weak right now let's make it competitive by waiting for an year or you should you know apply this year only because you will be able to target these universities these are within your range the fees you will consider several factors when you will apply ishant okay and the other students too you will consider fees you will consider location you will consider the ranking i mean ranking right now might be the might be the most important factor but gradually it will come down to second or third level because fees i mean you may go to harvard but harvard is so expensive will you be willing to spend so much okay at the expense of just getting a harvard degree so you'll think about your ex expenses now that how much you and your parents can invest in your education if they can then obviously you should target now if you feel no i have to manage i have to work within you know this range then you need to figure out which colleges and universities are open and remember that we are applying at international level it's not indian level when you apply at indian level then you're choosing from little now you're choosing from a huge lot so even the top top 100 you know uh, at international level can be way beyond you know the your uh, top 1 or top 10 of india all right so keep these factors in mind yes krati you need to fill the sat form on college board website once it is declared and open so keep checking that any other question kitana there are multiple ways to stand out uh, in your application without credit your extra curriculars your uh, you know your S sops your essays what sort of projects you have done how to portray those also matters na you might have done a wonderful project but you think it's insignificant its portrayal depends whatever you do is is significant okay it's, it depends how are you going to show that so for that you need to uh, speak to an expert kitana okay uh you can contact leap scholar uh can you write down your number and full name and number kithana in a private message i'll ask them to call you yes ishant it will be valid for 5 years All right, Kritana. I am making a note of this, and we'll ask for this to call you. Okay. All right. Any more questions from any one of you? Thank you. Shall we close the session here? Call it a day. Same to you. Have a nice day, nice evening, and a nice week ahead. Thank you to all of you. i'm not sure what we have it's a surprise so you attend tomorrow it will won't be me it could be math or it could be god or some other teacher all right guys bye bye thank you i'm closing the session here